A very good afternoon out there. Welcome to our live broadcast. This is the voice of Isa Phillips Akintola. Welcome to the Potter's Gate online broadcast. And this is our prophetic leadership school. This is a training that we've been doing for a while now, trying to help the body of Christ to be established in that which the Spirit of God, amen, defines as a strong, solid spiritual foundation, of course, relating to the nature of of the prophetic in other words if we desire to understand the nature and the character of how to function in the prophetic well this uh, uh, school provides us that opportunity to become proficient to become you know relevant and and empowered in that which is called effective uh, uh, spiritual living welcome uh, uh, guys this this afternoon welcome my dear brother melvin welcome my dear brother uh, gaffa uh, nice to have you connect with us all the way from united kingdom how you doing all right great 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 all right we're just waiting for a few other people to join us this afternoon and then we're going to continue our session 13 uh, this this afternoon we're going to be having our session 13 thank you so very much my dear brother melvin all right we're going to be continuing uh we've been laying some very important foundation in terms of uh, um getting to understand the framework and the the, the foundation if you will the, the 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 footing of effective you know spiritual connectivity what we've been doing basically is to help the body of christ return back to some of the key you know spiritual points that will allow us to build what we define as an effective spiritual life and uh, I, do, I believe that for us to be able to, you know, function effectively in what is called you know, the prophetic office or even the prophetic ministry, there are certain basic spiritual, you know, realities that we have to look back into. We have to go back to and we have to understand and factor into you know, the concept of our spiritual structure. All right, the things of God are, 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 are structural, amen, you know, in, in, in nature. In other words, they have to be built. God is a builder. Right. And the reason for that, amen, is to basically project the idea, amen, of solidity. The Bible talks about two kinds of, you know, life, two kinds of house, all right? Uh, the Bible says one house was built on the sand, okay, and the, the other house was built on the rock, okay? So what basically define the, this, the quality and the structural life in terms of resistance and being able to function, all right, is, is the foundation that they were built on, all right? The Bible talks about the foolish the foolish one who builds his house all right upon the sand and the wise and the wise man who builds his house all right upon the rock so we see two character nature defining the instrument to which a man we build with we can build with foolishness foolishness means the fact means that we do not take into cognizance all right the things that needs to be understood all right foolishness means that we, we are not applying amen at uh, uh, the concept of principles process systems that's what foolishness means it means that we don't take the things of god or we don't think things generally as important all right we look at things on the face value and we just come to conclusion that's foolishness the bible says for the fool says in his heart that there is no God. A fool is one who remains, all right, in the point of what he can see, what he can taste, what he can feel, what he can touch, all right? And then it comes to conclusion. If I can't touch, if I can't feel it, if I can't see, if I can't taste it, I don't believe, all right? That's a foolish one. But a wise one, amen, he's one who scrutinizes, who goes deep into the things of the spirit, who searches deep into the heart of God. Thank you. Oh, wow, my dear sister Tyre, thank you for connecting this this afternoon. Much appreciate, all right? So we're talking about this concept, all right? One book Builds his house upon the rock. The other builds his house, amen, upon the sand. This, these two concepts, amen, basically are the philosophy. Excuse me. These two concepts are the philosophy that guides our life, that guides our 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 sense of spirituality. All right, wherever we find ourselves in life, amen, either in the things of God or in our domestic life, in in terms of even developing, you know, capacity for, you know, uh, uh, for uh, for career, whatever it is in life, we are guided by these two systems. All right. The one who builds his house on the sand, right, and the one that builds his house on the rock. We, we 
cannot compare these two elements, these two matters, these, these two materials. Sand and rock cannot be compared. There's no comparison, all right? And, 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 and that's, that's the idea, all right, that the Spirit of the Lord is bringing to, you know, to, to, to project that which we are looking into in terms of understanding, amen, the prophetic nature of God. In fact, today I'm going to be talking about, or rather teaching on what, what we call the two theology of the prophetic, all right? You know, everything in life always have, you know, a, a, a two, 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 two system or two school of thoughts. In every area of life, you always have two systems or two school of thoughts, all right? And it's important that we understand the two. So we are able to articulately, excuse me, accurately define, amen, and articulate where we stand, all right? The Bible says there's a, there's a road that seemeth right unto man. It, it seemed right. Amen. That's a foolish one. It seemed right to him. He looked at it on the face value. He said, wow, this thing, this thing looks right. But everybody is saying, but no, no, no. This, this road is going to... I said, no, no, no. Can't you see? It looks right. It feels right. It tastes nice. Those are people who built their life, amen, on their senses faculty, what they can, what they can think, what they can feel. But they have no, uh, what you call that, you know, other dimension of, of existence of life, amen, that you can look at things from a, from a different pedestrian and, and, and draw wisdom. Wisdom is building this house. All right, this this season of you know a, a shutdown, global shutdown. All right, it, 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 it's it's been long coming for those of us that have been tracking the things of the spirit. We knew that this day is gonna come. We knew that this period is gonna come, and we've been preparing ourselves. We've been preparing people. It's like in the days of Noah. All right. People who who've been tracking with what God has been saying regarding the nature of 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 of, of their day, they've been following, they've been you know in, investing and you know pursuing and aligning their life, Amen, to what was coming. But guess what? Like they said in the days of now, they say, where is rain coming from? Where is rain coming from, Mr. Noah? How can you be building this kind of funny house? Who builds this kind of a house? I mean, everybody was laughing at Noah. Everybody was castigating Noah. I mean, the, the friends of Noah, you know, they deserted him because this guy looks spooky. He looks like somebody who's lost his mind. But Noah was building, I mean, in fact, the scripture, let me, while I'm on this, let me, let me, let me, let me show you something. I, the Lord just dropped this in my spirit while we're on Noah. This is very important because it's, it's, it's very important that we understand the, 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 the nature of what we are building, why, why we should build the way we are building, all right? It is important because if we don't, if we don't have, amen, the clarity, the, 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 the sense of urgency, like I've been sharing for a while, I still talk about that this morning. If we don't have a sense of urgency, if, if there's nothing pursuing us, somebody says, if something is pursuing you, must be able to see what is pursuing you. But the reality is there are things. Look at, look at the issue of coronavirus who sees coronavirus who can, who can say they can see corona if you want to see coronavirus you have to go to a lab <laughs> you, you you have to you have to look you know it through the you know to through the uh, what they call them now the microscope for you to be able to see that thing they call corona but you know it's in the air but nobody sees it imagine walking you know just walking the street and say well and shaking and touching people all around say well, i don't care about corona i don't care i I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> have you have you heard the news? Even uh, 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 this, uh, 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 Angla Bak is the call him now. This, you know, very important, uh, you know, uh, a spiritual leader in South Africa. He's caught the thing. I mean, he's, he's been found to be positive. So I'm saying this thing is touching every area of our life, but he's speaking to us about the things of the spirit. Let's, let's not just focus on Corona. Let's see amen, the, 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 the parable that Corona amen, is, is sharing with us, is trying to show us that there are things beyond amen, our natural eyes. There are things beyond our sensory, you know, human, you know, uh, you know, reasoning. There are things that we've got to think about that we may not be able to see with our eyes, but yet they can impact our life. In fact, they're impacting our economy. All right? This little teeny weeny, you know, uh, uh, you know, virus is shutting down the entire the entire economy of the world is being shut down. Come here, come on. But yeah, this thing we can see it. So if you're waiting for something you see with your natural eyes before you fight, if you're waiting for something, all right, that you can feel before you engage, uh, you're gonna be missing. You're gonna be missing the boss. And a lot of us, a lot of Christians, indeed miss the boss. And many are still missing the boss. Many who, who, who have allowed religion to define their life. They say, what are you talking about? Why are you making so much a force of this thing? Uh, come on. You're going to realize that after a while, you're going to start sneezing. You're going to start feeling all the symptoms. Oh, wow. Yes. 
But guess what? You can prevent these things. Just like we can prevent certain things from happening to us. We can prevent amen, our life being imparted by ignorance. We can prevent our life being captured amen, by false, false apostle, false prophet, false spirit. We can prevent ourselves being captured amen, by false Christ, by false Jesus. We can pre prevent hallelujah, all of the things that is attacking, that is, that is buffeting a lot of people today that have made so many people to leave the church, so many people to get angry, so many people all right, to look at prophet and and just call them false prophet but guess what the lord is still speaking the fact that the fact that we have people that have misrepresented the fact that we have people that have abused the gift the fact that we have people out there all right today that you know that that have built wrongly doesn't mean that god have stopped speaking and god have stopped using his prophets it doesn't mean that so all we need to do amen is to find hallelujah how to connect to truth what to do in order to be able to relate to that which is authentic is a day where we have to know hallelujah how to separate the lie amen from from the truth the error hallelujah from the reality these are days where we've got to develop we've got to empower we've got to step up we've got to prep up our ability to discern and this is why we are emphasizing on this school you need it i need it a lot of us need it in the, in our day amen I, I just quickly want to show us something quickly mm. In Hebrews chapter 11, I want to track something here. Thank you, Jesus. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Now, if you if you read the book of Hebrews chapter eleven, all right. If you if you read read Hebrews chapter eleven, you find something very 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 important here. You find something very very important here because Hebrews eleven shows us how to engage the things of the spirit. And remember, we're talking about developing, amen, the right spiritual foundation in terms of you know coming into the atmosphere or into the arena of what is called the prophetic ministry. All right. And, 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 and God has been able to, you know, show me some keys in his word that will allow us, amen, to, to, to flow or to tap into, amen, the true nature, amen, the true identity, the true state, amen, of our, ori of, of our originality, of our identity in Christ. And I think that is something that has been missing at least for a while in the church. I've seen the people, I've seen, I've seen, I've heard a lot of people talk about the prophetic ministry. We've talked about the prophetic gift, but I seldom hear here people really give us amen how to access that grace that gift what are the things we need to know how do we connect how, how do how, how does somebody grow up to become a prophet have you ever asked yourself do you ask yourself such a question these are questions that you know really challenge me you know I, I, yes i know i can i can prophesy a lot of people can prophesy but they don't know how they got the prophetic gift they don't know a lot of people can do so many things in the in terms of what the we know we know the prophetic but how do we how do we get to that position what do we need to do are we born with it all right do we grow in it amen do, do we is there is there something that must happen to us to be able to say suddenly or uh through process i've come to a place where i am now amen, a bona fide prophet or i can function in the prophetic gift you know maybe because of my curiosity amen and my 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 my, my desire all right to you know to want to know i ask god a lot of questions you know, I'm one of those, you know, uh, minor prophets like Zechariah. I, I will ask, what are these? You know, show me. What, what are you talking about? I don't just see things and get excited. I mean, that I, I don't know. Maybe that's the way God, you know, designed me. And I think that's the way God designed me. Because it, it allowed me to understand a lot of things. That I don't look at things on the face value. I don't just look at things and conclude. No, I want to find out. Amen. The Bible talks about the prophet who by searching, they, by their search, they come to the conclusion. All right, we should have a department, amen, where, where, where we can research and develop the things of the spirit. Yes, 
a department, you know, R and D department, department where we where we research, where we where we research the things of God, where we take time to study the things of God and begin to understand why things work, Amen, the way they work or how things function the way they function. A lot of things that we are doing in the church, in the body of Christ, Amen, are, are things that you know some of us are just you know we found ourselves there. We were born it, and you know because environment both natural and spiritual are contagious all right it means that if you're in an environment where uh, you know people talk about the prophetic a lot all right you all you hear is about the prophetic or all you hear is about faith guess what it's so natural for you to begin to uh, talk about that thing in fact function in it after all, that was how you know uh, you know uh, uh, king Saul began to function they say when you come among a man you will find a company of the of the prophet when you come among them <laughs> when you come among them that prophetic thing will fall upon you and you yourself will begin to prophesy until people say, hey, is, 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 is Saul also one of the sons of the prophets? No. He just came in contact. Hallelujah. It's called transference of spirit. We can come in contact with certain grace, with certain giftings. Amen. And function in it and really do not have the understanding, the footing. And that's why the things of the spirit, hallelujah, we need to understand them so that when we when we say we, 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 we know them, then we can really talk about them. The Bible said we should be able to defend our faith. One of the reasons why I'm, I'm sharing this and we've made this open amen, to the general public in terms of the body of Christ is so that we are able to mitigate the issue of deceptions and lie that we've seen in the church. A lot of things are being done out there in the name of a prophet, in the name of the prophetic gift. Do you know that we can query and we can question what we call the prophetic? The Bible says one should prophesy, two should judge. How do we judge if we don't have the spirit, amen, to allow or to assist us, amen, in defining what is right from wrong? Because that's how we judge. If you don't know what is right from wrong, you're not a judge. The judge sits in the court, amen, to, you know, to, 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 to listen and, and, to, and to pass judgment by, by evidence. It comes to conclusions. Uh, 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 no, you're wrong. You're right. The Bible says one should prophesy, two should judge. Do, do we actually understand what it means, amen, to judge in the things of the Spirit? Because the reason why a lot of people are getting deceived, multitude, multitude in the valley of decision is because, amen, they don't know their right, you know, from, they don't know their left from right. They don't know what is right from wrong. This is the reason why Jesus is saying, be careful that you don't get to be deceived. Be careful because one of the things that we're seeing, amen, and we're continuing going to see in the last day is the increase of the spirit of deception and seduction. The increase, amen, of the spirit of Deception and seduction is what, in fact, the scripture said, if, 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 if the days are not cut short, can you imagine? The Bible says if the days are not cut short, somebody like me will be deceived. The Bible says even the very elect will be deceived. That, that, that tells us, amen, how, how powerful, amen, how subtle, if you will. That there are certain deception that if you don't know the heart, if you don't know the core, if you don't know the, 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 the nitty gritty, if you don't have the footing of, of what truth is, you will be deceived. Because that thing will sound like God. It will look like God. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you see the, 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 the creature in the, in, the, in, the, in the book of Revelation? It looks like a lamb, but it speaks with the voice of a dragon. So if we take things on the face value, we're going to be deceived. But I wanted to bring something across your path. And of course, I know it's in, I know it's in Hebrews chapter 11. I've just not been able to lay my hands on it. I don't want to read the whole thing. Uh -huh, but because if, 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 in fact, if you, if you read the entire Hebrews 11, it, 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 it brings you into a point where you need to begin to not just scrutinize, but understand what I call the philosophy of engaging the things of the spirit. Because faith is a philosophy. The Bible says, okay, let's, let, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to you know, divert a little bit, but it's fine because this will give us some preamble and you know, a framework to what we're dealing with. Remember, what we're dealing with is understanding the prophetic spirit and its functionality. That's what we're trying to you know, understand. All right? I'm, not, I'm not just interested in somebody prophesying. <laughs> Anybody can prophesy. It's easy to prophesy. You understand? I can teach you how to prophesy. 
I can teach you how you know how to walk in the word of word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Those are those are the least things. Those are least things. Those things that we think are the you know the no no no. Those are least things. What I'm trying to do is to build what I call the right spiritual footing that establish the foundation. Amen. In functioning in what is called Hallelujah, the the default reality of our prophetic nature. The the prophetic is first a nature before it becomes a gift. Is that what they're talking about? Were you created by God? Everything born of God, hallelujah, has a prophetic you know, dimension. Because you see, God by, by nature is prophetic. You see, you see, you see, this is where we need to begin to understand what the prophetic is. Because if you don't understand this thing, you want to go on to you know the, 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 the gift and you want to go on to the office, you're gonna be deceived. You're going to be deceived because anybody can come out and just shake anything before you and, and wangle anything before you and scream amen, and shout amen, and say receive it and in the name of the prophetic and you're going to run after it because you're seeing manifestation. Now, what we're trying to do is to track that weather manifestation. Bible said test all spirit. You cannot test a spirit if you don't have I mean, what it takes to test. I mean if you don't have a tester how do you test if the wire is positive or negative? Hello? If you don't have a tester, you know just a tester you know you know that you know uh, what they call it now school you know uh, um, what they call it? <laughs> I think they call it a tester <laughs> you know a screwdriver if you don't have a screw, the, the right screwdriver you know that, that, that one when you put it into light okay you're gonna see you're gonna see a light coming out it's called a tester right yes i know they call it a tester at least from where i come from don't know what they call it here all right if you don't have a tester you cannot test if that wire amen is life amen or, or you know or, or, or not you may just go touch the wire and they go <laughs> but with a tester amen you know that oh there's there's power in this there's electricity in the, you've got to have something to be able to test if something is true or not that's what i'm talking about the bible says amen babylon the woman who sits on the beast amen would deceive the entire world and indeed we are all being deceived today <laughs> If people begin to unpack what is behind Corona before you, you you'll be shocked. You, your jaw will drop. But that's not what we're interested in, because not everything that we see appear the way they are. We've got to be able to understand the heart. We've got to be able to understand what is behind it. And this is what I'm interested in. This is what I want to pass to the church. This is what I want to bring to the body of Christ. So we are no longer the, the, we listen, friends. In this twilight of a brand new day, in this day earlier, where we are stepping into the third reality, the third dimension of the things of the spirit, we can no longer, hallelujah, be playing with you know, you know, primary foundational things. Because if we do, we will be deceived. That's why it seems as if I'm going back to some basic foundational things. Yes, we've got to have the basic. If we don't know the basic, we have to go back. I like what you said, uh, my dear sister Shala. <laughs> Some of us will have to go back. Some of our people will go back, amen, to certain things that they have they have refused to learn. Yes, they will be. They will have to go back. I remember somebody who said he went to heaven. I can't remember who that person was. He said he, he, he saw Paul. He saw you know Apostle Paul teaching the people. I said, but they've gone to heaven. <laughs> Paul was still teaching people in heaven the oracles of Christ. Yes, because listen to this: getting to heaven is it, it doesn't mean that you have escaped the things you ought to know. Because listen to this: if you don't know certain things, amen, that defines how you are to relate with God and how you are to commune and communicate with the things of the kingdom, they will send you back. You have to go learn those things because teaching is part of the nature of God. That's why Jesus gave us, amen, you know, fivefold ministry. He divided himself into five dimensions all of that amen are the expression of what you call the crystal the crystal grace the crystal life amen to empower to equip to perfect the church so that we and you and i can come into what maturity the church is perfected by the grace and the gifting that is given to her those gifts are men the gift, amen, are men. The, the, the ability and the capacity to train, to develop, amen, are imparted within men. You cannot separate the gift, amen, from the development of the man. What to you, O nation, if your king is a child? 
There are many children today handling, you know, spiritual things. No wonder they are fumbling. No wonder, all right, you know, certain, certain, certain things they do. Money comes into their, into their hand. They lose their brain. They lose their gift. They lose their identity because, you know, they're children. It is a child that you give a toy and that's what the child wants, you know. To some of us, you know, just the fact that we're able to give a prophecy and something happened and somebody scream and say, yeah, I received. And, you know, and somebody comes tomorrow and give a testimony and say, well, hallelujah, God has done it. Man of God, here is, you know, 200,000, here 300,000. And you, you go get yourself a toy, call a car, all right? And you now begin to walk as if <laughs> nobody like me, <laughs> nobody like me, I have arrived. It's a toy. You don't understand the things of the spirit. That's why we cannot underplay, amen, or oversimplify the nature of the days that we live in. Because if we do, my God, we will be playing with fire. And I believe that's the reason why the Lord is tearing my heart. You've got to prep my people. You've got to bring my people back to school. You've got to, you've got to bring my people back to school. Bring them back to the class. They need to be retrained. They need to be developed. They need to be equipped. Have you noticed that all the things that Paul did, hallelujah, were done through a dimension, through a sector called amen, the school of Tyrannos. In Nigeria, we run that school. Our school used to be called school of Tyrannos. All of the mighty things, amen, that Paul did and the people that he raised to do those mighty things, hallelujah, for the first two years, they were all locked in a place called the school of Tyrannos. The school of Tyrannos was just, amen, you know, a, 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 you know, a facility that is run by a philosopher. When they kicked Paul out of the church, <laughs> on the other side of the road, he found a philosopher who ran, you know, like a, you know, like a, you know, a, a, a big auditorium. They were running their philosophy school. So Paul was using that place. It's called Tyrannos House. <laughs> amen. That, that was the name of our school back then in Nigeria. Tyrannos School. We we're running. It was there we train and develop and equip and empower people. That today many of them are pastors and leaders wherever they are. The, pr the principle have not changed. This, this day we cannot run by zeal. And oh, hallelujah, praise. No, 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 no. Those days are gone. This is, this is the day to sit. When you sit, when they realize that certain things have been deposited in your life, they will say, stand up. And while you are standing up, they will still be depositing. They will still be structuring. They will still be fashioning. And then they will say, start walking. All right. As you begin to walk, you begin to develop muscle. Now they can say, it's time to fly. You've got to understand the things of the spirit, hallelujah, are done in process. You cannot jump stack. Hallelujah. You cannot shun, shun the things of the spirit. You've got to follow the right path. Pattern, a little here, a little there. Principle upon principle, line upon line, step upon step. That is how the things of the spirit are. If you ever think you are going to leave the footing of the foundation and jump to the roofing, I tell you the house is going to come down. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time, friends. We have to teach people. We have to bring people back to what it means to be a true prophet. It is not making noise. not screaming around. It's not every second giving prophetic word. Thus yet the Lord. The fact that we say thus yet the Lord to every word that we give doesn't even mean that it's prophetic. Because if that is what defines prophetic, then we we, we deceived. The fact that someone said thus yet the Lord. I was like, oh, God is speaking. God has been speaking before you say thus yet the Lord. You understand? All of the things that Paul was saying, you don't hear thou see of the Lord, but they were all prophetic. Jesus was speaking from the bars of the prophetic, but you, you hear him say, oh, thou see of the Lord. What am I saying? I'm saying even the term thou see of the Lord is religious to a certain degree. Because if you have the word of God and the word of God lives in you, you can easily give the word of God. Listen to this. What defines amen, the validity of the word amen, is the manifestation and is the spirit character behind that word. Even when the word comes to pass, we can see query and question the word. What spirit brought that word? We want to see the fruit amen, that, 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 that capture the, the, the manifestation amen, of that which we have received. Because listen to this. We can, we can receive a manifestation amen, of in Kodosia the law from the tree of the of the from the from the tree of the fruit of the from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil yes people are still eating from that tree and people are still doing powerful things people are building church hallelujah people are, yeah, are building prophetic ministry they are building powerful apostolic gathering from hallelujah the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that thing has some goodness <laughs> 
no matter how small, that thing carries some goodness. And if you ever taste of that fruit, I tell you, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to turn to the tree of life. No wonder the Bible says, he who has partaken of the old. And when you give him the new, no, he says the old is better. Because the taste board, hallelujah, has been captured. When our taste board, hallelujah, has not been refined by the ministry of a teacher. If we're, if our taste board, hallelujah, has not been refined, has not been changed, has not been dealt with, hallelujah. We have to learn to eat the new, to know how to reject the old. The point I'm making is... If you don't have, if you don't have, if you do not have the spiritual quality to test what truth is, you will buy the lie. In fact, you will pay so much price for it. <laughs> you will pay so much price for the lie. And that's what's going on today in the body of Christ. As long as the person can come, you know, maybe dress like the way I'm dressed today. In fact, this way I'm dressed today is just, you know, don't mind me. This one, I just feel like dressing like this today, but this is not me really. You know, you know? and they look nice, you know, you look, you, you know, that's how, you see, that's how Babylon, Babylon uses, you know, what they call packaging, you know, branding. Babylon uses branding to capture people. As I, I keep telling people, if, if I want to build the biggest church in South Africa, I can do that in the next six months. I've got all that it takes. But it will be <laughs> from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So when we live our life in a particular way, and even when we dress in a particular way, it is deliberate. Everything we do in the kingdom, it's deliberate. Even as a prophet, listen to this, the clothes you wear, hallelujah, must be sourced. Amen. Listen to this. Must be sourced by, 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 the, by the temperature of the spirit. By the temperature of the spirit. You can't just wear oh, this today. I'm going to wear this suit. And tomorrow I'm going to wear that suit. What happened the day God says you wear your slippers and just put a shirt? He said, ah, the people is not going to respect me. <laughs> they will not accept me. You see? Because, because the presentation of what we define, amen, to be man of God, to be woman of God, amen, to be, you know, uh, an important person in the things of God is the dressing. Listen to this. May God deliver us from, from, from fig leaves. These are fig leaves. Hallelujah. But when the glory of God, hallelujah, come back and reside in us and cover us. Listen, people will not see what you wear, but they will see the Christ and the aura of Christ flowing out of you. Let's not be deceived. But before I get carried away, I wanted to show you something in Hebrews chapter, chapter 11. That what we are dealing with has to do with something that has to connect us to a life beyond the environment. The, a life beyond all of the things that surround me. There is a dimension of a life that we are trying to touch. That, that operation of immortality. We want to break the seal that stops us. So we can touch that thing. It's from there, amen, that the, that the dimension of, of the new day priesthood born after the order of Melchizedek comes into, 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 into fruition. That's what we are crying for. This is the, this is the bat pang, hallelujah. This is the cry of a new day that we may be changed and step into, hallelujah, the dimension, the life, amen, of this eternal priesthood born after the order of Melchizedek. But we will not enter that order, amen, if we don't understand what faith is. Now faith is. Let's read. Now faith is. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of the things we do not see. That's a culture. That's a philosophy. That's not the principle to get things. There is a faith that will, that will be leading you, hallelujah, to apprehend him. And you may never have things. Oh, come on. Because, you see, the, the life that we are being brought into is not a life that is validated by what we have. It's by what we carry. The day where we have abuse the operations of the things of God to acquire things those days are past can't you see it's a new day <laughs> they brought they brought everyone now to you know a divine you know level a divine plane everything is shut down the economy is shut down the church is shut down the leaders are shut down everything is locked down it's called the day of divine equilibrium the day of divine setting yes the high and the mighty too are getting it 
<laughs> they are realizing, hey, even the rich can cry. Everybody's running, hitting their head. What are we going to do about this day? You better hide your head and let this, let this season of siege pass. Let God do what he wants to do. Yes, the mountain shall be made low. The valley is filled. The crooked path, yes, may strengthen. All eyes shall see the glory of God. All eyes shall see the glory of God. Is a day, is a day of the twilight of the glory. The kingdom, hallelujah, is becoming more visible, more clearer. Our salvation is nearer than we ever believe. So we have to rest in this day of the Sabbath. If you try to... <laughs> <laughs> if you try, <laughs> if you try to flex your muscle in this brand new day, <laughs> don't mind me laughing. If you try to flex your muscle, I can do and undo. I will go. <laughs> you will have yourself to blame. This is the day of Sabbath. It's a day of the Lord. In the day of the Lord, you have to rest in his strength alone. You have to rest in his strength alone. You have to move from the things that you can see. And you have to be seeking for that city. That you can't see. But it's coming down. We're searching for that city with foundations. Who's builder and maker is God. The city of men are collapsing. The idols of men are falling. Hi. The fire of God is consuming nations. The wind is blowing. The tsunami is judging us. Noah and the eight have entered the ark. There's a movement upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Can you hear the bat pang of creation? Can you feel the agony of creation? Billions have been lost that cannot be counted. When the whole thing starts, one day, just one day, China lost 400, 400 US, you know, US dollars, 400, excuse me, 400 billion US dollars in one day. We still thought, Ay, this is, God says, wait, I'm going to show you more. <laughs> heaven, heaven is speaking. Who is listening? Heaven is speaking. Who is listening? The handwriting is on the wall. Who can read? The intelligence of men are failing them. What is this? Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of the things we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended. Who, were, who are those ancient people? <laughs> hey, go along. This is, they say, who, these are the things that the ancient, the ancient people were commended. Who are these ancient people? These icons of the spirit. These people who have journeyed the path that we are still, you know, groping to, to find. They, they walked through the path. Enoch walked the path. Noah walked the path. Abraham walked the path. All of these people understand how to connect to the eternal life of what is called the prophetic. The prophetic, like I said, amen, is an ancient order locked within the very breath of God. When God said, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness before they ever gave us dominion. When the breath into us, it was the life of the prophetic that awakened us up. That's what I'm talking about, friends. That's where we must stop this life from. Lest we go source what the prophetic is from the, from the second day, from the, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. No, no, we don't want that. I can write volumes upon volumes of books on what the, on what the prophetic is and what prophetic can do. I never touch this, 
dimension. Listen to this. You can read and eat that fruit and you will be deceived. Just like there's so many books out there today in the name of the prophetic that people are feeding on. Many, many that are deceiving people because they never touch the heart, the core, the foundation, the footing of what this thing sits on. Faith is the commodity that links us, hallelujah, to the highway of the spirit that reconnect us back to the eternal life that we share with him in the beginning. In that life, in that thing called the life of God, when you begin to analyze that life, you will find something called the spirit of the prophetic. See, the life of God is a component of so many dimensions of expressions. The life of God is a component of so many dimensions. It's called a prism. That's why there cannot be a light without the life of God. The life of God is the producer of the light. When that light goes through a prism, you will find yourself seven colors. Each of those colors represent amen, a nature, a character, an expression, a life, a flow, a gift, a grace within the order of God. You see, when they gave Joseph amen, that coat of many colors, it was life they gave to him. The life that brought him through the journeys of pain. Until he came to a day where he fulfilled that which a man is being destined for before time began. This thing we're talking about, amen, supersedes time. It lives, it transcends time. It lives outside the order of a gift. The true prophetic, listen to this, the true nature of the prophetic, when the church is seized, that thing will still continue to function because it's a life in God. It's not just a gift. It's not just an anointing. It is not just an anointing. I was talking about that yesterday. I'm going to still talk about it today. And we're going to look, we're going to connect to this thing. Now, this faith that we're looking at, you see, <laughs> the charismatic church perverted this thing. In the 90s, when God began to move, they, they turned this, this faith, this faith of our fathers, this grace, this gift that was given to us to our here before God, they turn it to a tool to acquire things. So when men use this thing and they saw how this thing can give them a big house and a big ministry and a big church and a, everything big, mega, mega, like somebody would say, is mega, mega. Is <laughs> mega, but you have no omega. You lost the life and you collected things and ran away. Is a ministry of the of the prodigal son. Abuse your you abuse your place and your position. You abuse your call and your gifting. You use what God gave to you to bring people to perfection, to collect things. You never smell the life of God. That was still the nature, amen, of the fallen man operating. He allowed the devil to pervert, amen, his his his, his place and his position. Adam, where are you? It's still that voice is still echoing today. Adam, where are you? Now, faith is their defining one powerful instrument that will allow us to touch the core of the life of the nature that will link us to what is called, amen, the spirit of the prophetic. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of the things we do not see. By this faith, the ancients were commended. By faith, we understood that the universe, not just the world now, not just the world, not just the world, the universe were formed, hallelujah, at God's command so that the things that is seen are made of the things that are not seen. That's a kingdom philosophy. That's not a faith message. That is a kingdom order. It's not a faith message. By faith, we understood. I spoke to us yesterday that in the in the in the hierarchies of the of the ministry 
amen, of God, of the ministry of Christ to his church, of the ministry of the things, there's, there are things called the things of the spirit, in the hierarchy of the, of the, of the things, I hope you understand that those, those seven dimensions, those seven nature of what you call the spirit of Christ that we read in Isaiah 11, those are not gifts. <laughs> those are not gifts. No, no, no. Those are the nature of God. That if, you, if they give you a gift and those nature are not well built and well seated in you, the gift will finish. The gift will kill you. It's like, it's like trying to carry power without a man being prepared to carry the power. And in that order, we see amen, the things that men are running after, like revelation. We saw where the revelation came. Revelation was on the fourth dimension. In the things of God, when, when you talk about or you want to touch the things of God, the first thing you must touch amen, is wisdom. By wisdom, we understood that the world were created. By wisdom, we understood, hallelujah, that the world were shaped. Wisdom is the principal thing. Is the principal thing. Not faith. Wisdom is the principal. Because, hey, in the dimension of wisdom, the power of creativity and the intention of what was created, hallelujah, is found. He said, I, wisdom, was with him in the beginning. I, wisdom. So wisdom is not the thing. Wisdom is a person. In the operations of wisdom, we tap into certain realities that it will take the prophetic to unlock those things to us and it will take the gift, amen, of the keys of the kingdom, amen, to enter into the sphere of life. That's why we're talking about the things of God, the things of the kingdom, understanding the prophetic spirit and its functionality. People want to function in things they don't understand. That's why the thing is boomeranging, is killing them. What that thing ought to build is destroying. By faith we understand. That the universe we have formed. So there are dimensions that we don't even understand yet. Because we only understand amen, our domain. <laughs> we only understand this domain. But there are domains called the universe. In the orders of the stars... And the galaxies and the Milky Ways and the eons. There are things that heaven has kept amen, for us, waiting for the day of what? Maturity. Yes. These things are concealed until the, until the day we mature, then they will be unsealed. By faith, we understood that the universe were formed of, of God's command so that the things that are seen. Are made of things that, that are visible. Excuse me, that are invisible. Alright? By faith, Abel. Now you begin to see. So they define this concept of faith. What faith is. Now they begin to show us. Amen. Certain icons who walk in this order. To walk in the order of faith is to walk in the order of eternal life. To walk in the order of faith is to walk in the realm of immortality. Because faith, amen, is the only key that crosses you from mortal realm into immortality. If you want to understand, amen, the gift and the operations of the prophetic, you have to step up. You have to step out of your mortality into immortality. Immortality is the present reality of the operations of the ascended ones. Immortality is not a place we go to someday. <laughs> no, it's a dimension of existence. It's a culture of life. When you step into the things of God, when you step into the kings, things of the kingdom, amen, you, will, you will step into immortal realm, amen, except a man be born again. He, I said some time ago, I said we, some of us still do not understand the essence of salvation. Some people think salvation is just to take us, oh, finally I thank God I've given my life to Jesus. At least I'm going to heaven. Aye, there are operations that you don't understand that is waiting for you, that you need the pass of redemption to step into. Except a man be born again, he cannot see. So you understand that salvation brings you to what? To sight. That sight is the calibration, amen, of your, of your, of your fallen faculty. That's, the, that's what the prophetic does. The prophetic is to awaken your dead 
faculty your, 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 your faculty comes back to life suddenly you can begin to interact with spiritual things some people when they begin to talk about spiritual things uh, you, lose, you just lose them they're like they are lost they are lost because spiritual things amen. they've not been taught they've not been schooled they've not been to the school of Tyrannus they've not, they've not been enrolled in the school of Samuel A lot of people, they want to run, but they have not learned to sit. The Bible says, amen, before Jesus sent them out, he first called them to, to himself. They lived with him. What do you think they were doing? You think they were just every day, they wake up, they were, you know, he was teaching them. He was teaching them, amen. And then in the daytime, he would take them, hallelujah, to, you know, to, 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 to the mountain. He would take them to the mountain. Amen. He would sit down and he would begin to lecture them and teach them about the things. The Bible says when Jesus died and rose again for 40 days, he was teaching of the things pertaining to the kingdom. He never healed one person after his resurrection. He never fed nobody again. Have you noticed that? <laughs> after resurrection, Jesus never, you will never see where he fed the man, where he raised the dead, where he, uh, those are secondary things. They were good, but they have, when you step into the reality of the kingdom, there is a life you can live in, hallelujah, that you don't, you don't even get hungry again. There is a dimension that you begin to operate, that, you know, all those little things. But remember when the church began, they said we must give ourselves to prayer, amen, and, and, and to the ministry of the word, but we will, we will, we will set out for, 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 you know, for the church, amen, a department that will feed tables that will that will sustain that will minister to people yes because that's part of the ministry we have to minister amen to the needs of men we have to minister to their to you know to their mortal life we have to minister to their body feed them amen clothe them jesus did all that amen but there is a ministry beyond that call the ministry of prayer hallelujah and the word because that is the key to enter into the dimension of the kingdom life where we can begin to summon things and, and operate in realities, in dimension that human mind cannot comprehend. People are still, are still yet to understand what the ecclesia means. That's all these things people are building, running around. <laughs> you think that's the church? <laughs> You're joking. Jesus is building his church, not man. In the, in the church crisis building, you will find all of this thing that I'm talking about is not strange to them. They understand this. By faith we understood that the universe were formed, by, formed at God's command so that the things that are seen was made out of what was not out, out of what was visible. Were not made, excuse me, was not made out of what was visible. Let's continue. By faith, Abel. Yes, but I'm not talking about Abel. By faith, Enoch. Mm. Once again, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham, by faith Abraham, by faith Moses, by faith, by faith, by faith. So you, you begin to understand that <laughs> faith is an access to the things of God. Faith is an access to the things of God, not to possessing material things. If you reduce faith to that thing, you will never touch God. Not the things of the Spirit. But the one I want to show you is number verse 7 of uh, this concept of faith. But faith, Noah, when one, listen to this, when one of the things not yet seen, we're, we're looking at some of the components, foundational templates that defines how to connect, hallelujah, to what is called the spirit of the ministry of the prophetic. When, when Noah was one of the things not yet seen, where does that, what, where does that realm live? The things not yet, there are things that are not yet seen. There are things, when they say it's a thing, it's a thing. I mean, a thing is a thing. If it's a thing, it's real. Come on. By faith, Noah was one of things, things. There are sub, if it's a thing, it's got a, it's got a substance, it's got a space. Hallelujah. It can be contained. Things and events. A reality, a realm, a dimension of existence. By faith, Noah was one of things. Those things can be a city, can be a nation. Of things. 
not yet seen. In other words, those things have not become visible. Those things have not yet manifest, but they are, but they are living in a dimension. <laughs> they are living in a realm. There's a realm where these things are contained. It's like you know, it's like you you store your your your, your goods in you know in a warehouse. There's a there's a dimension. There's a warehouse somewhere. <laughs> there is there is there is a city coming down. You, can you see it? You can't see. It. But but there is a city. I mean, a city coming down. A city coming down. <laughs> God. Spiritual things are tangible. That's what I'm talking about. There is a life. There's a culture. There's a citizenship. I, I, did you hear? We have become yes. We become yes. The commonwealth. The citizens of heaven. Yes. There's a realm. By faith, Noah was one of things not yet visible to the human. You see, anything that has become visible to the natural eyes has lived the realm of the spirit. That thing has become generalized. People who are tracking with God don't live in that realm. But that is the realm where people begin to say, oh, hallelujah, wow, did you see? No wonder, you know, a, a man just performed miracle things. He just walked away. If, if we bring it down to the human realm and the moment they start celebrating it, it's time to move on. The day I would have said, when we bring something from the spirit realm to the human realm, the moment people start celebrating it, guess what? The moment people start celebrating that thing, we should move on. Sorry, my wife was just sending me a message. We should move on. All right? That's why we live in the realm of hope and faith. Hope make it not a shame. We don't live in a dimension that, oh yeah, we have seen it. Our dimension of existence, amen, is in that spiritual realm that men cannot understand. The moment men can begin to you know, appreciate and celebrate what, you know, what we have done and what... The, <laughs> It's time to take a journey. For we have not a continuous city. We are seeking for the one to come. Friends, I'm laying. I thought I thought I'll be able to start building today, but I discovered that the Lord still wants us to lay another foundation. So today again we, we're building another layer in this foundation. When you understand this dimension of life, you see, you never stop. Because you, you, are, you are not praying just, you know, to have a feel in the human realm. Because the realm that you are living, the realm that you are living, hallelujah, is a realm that you express feeling. You express it in faith. You express joy. You express it in joy. The Bible says, the, the, the fathers, amen, that left, they saw the city from afar. They embraced it as if they had entered it, even though they did not enter, but they lived in the dimension, hallelujah, as if they have entered it, and they rejoice. Didn't Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to have seen my day? <laughs> How? He rejoiced to have seen my day. Abraham rejoiced. Abraham. You lived in two generations. <laughs> Abraham rejoiced to see the day of Jesus. Can, can we comprehend these things? This is where we factor, we draw, we establish what is called the ministry of the prophetic. It's a nature. It's not just a gift that we use. It's not the thing to be used. It's a nature that uses us. It's a life that we walk in. It's a cloak that we wear. It's the food that we eat. It's a drink that we drink. Is a lingua, hallelujah, of our culture. The culture of the spirit is an expression of a prophetic life. Aye. The culture of the spirit is an expression of the prophetic life. The prophetic is our nature. It's like you, 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 you can't change who I am. I can't change who I am. No matter how I try to dye my face, I'm a black man. Dark skin. Are you getting this, friends? You can't change it. If you take me right now and put me anywhere in the world, I'll still be in Nigeria. 
and I'll still love my nation. No matter how I spend, you know, decades in South Africa, if you drop, if you drop me in Nigeria today, I will still eat my egusi soup and still eat my pande diam. That's who I am. You can't change it. That's how it is in the things of the spirit. You were born in it. <laughs> you were born into the prophetic life. It's not something somebody gives to you. <laughs> Give No, nobody gives to you. People can only come and steer it up. Especially if you are appointed, hallelujah, to work in the office. Then that thing on the inside of you will be pushing you towards a certain direction. You'll be rejecting certain food. You'll be rejecting certain places. You won't understand. You will think you're strange. What's making you? Why are you so strange? It's not strange. It's that thing on the inside. It's that nature on the inside. Hallelujah. The, the like is begetting the like. Amen. Yes, like attracts light. Like attracts like. Light attracts light. <laughs> they said the bird of the same of the same feather flock together. Yes. If you're in the prophetic and you're in a house where they're just sermonizing you, one day you're going to get angry. You take your Bible and walk away. <laughs> you will walk away. They will say, you will sit in your house out of frustration. It is the spirit of God that is tearing the heart of people. Pastors don't get angry when people leave the church. Sometimes it's frustration. They don't know what is going on in their life. They themselves cannot explain themselves. It is God that is working in them, pulling them, calling them, summoning them. They can't stay in your little weak, you know, religious sermon. See, when I talk like this, a lot of men of God, they get angry with me. <laughs> well, I'm just doing what I'm called to do. You see, I'm a prophet. I'm a voice of one. My voice must call people out. You see, come out of them. Touch not the unclean things. Heaven is preparing you for something great. You're sitting among them that are chewing chewing gum and drinking coffee in the church. Come on. There is a dimension of a life they want you to engage to bring people to a new reality of the identity. In my day, I was, I was one of the best. I celebrated where I came from. I was sitting among them who, who were enjoying the best of the charismatic, the charismatic move. I never knew anything about the prophetic. Until some crazy women from America came to our church, lay hands on me, <laughs> prophesying to my life. I mean, it's like you know, it's like it's like something putting fire at the tail of those fox. I just I just became an enemy to the Philistine, burning everything I see. They asked me to pray. Things start shooting out of my mouth like this. <laughs> I mean. I was spewing fire, all kinds, of, everywhere I go. I was a disaster. I'm asking, is something wrong with me? What's going on? People are having party. You know, they invite Isaiah. I'm just there. Hallelujah. They say, you know, Isaiah, pray for us. Uh, they, they <laughs> the, the birthday party turns to a, a crusade ground. I can't stop it. I can't help it. I thought I was an evangelist. People call me evangelist. I love being an evangelist. I mean the boss. Everywhere I go, I was preaching down fire. Everywhere I go, I was preaching. I got myself a megaphone. Because of the vision that I saw. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord with my two eyes. With, with a trumpet in his mouth. And what was coming out of the trumpet? He said, go tell my people that my coming is sooner than they expect. That's the word. I'll never forget. Go tell my people that my coming is sooner than they expect. So I thought, you know, I was an evangelist. I never even understood because the church that I grew up, there was nothing that defined to me what the people of God. I mean, to me, the people of God is everybody. I didn't know there is a dimension of a people that I'm called to speak to called the people of God, the church. I was just there, you know, firing... <laughs> Until the grace of God begin to bring me to certain knowledge. I say, wait a minute. Until people began to confirm that you're a prophet. And when I'm praying, I, start, I just start prophesying. What start flowing out of my mouth? But even then, I was not satisfied. So I decided, okay, I was going to go to Bible school. After all, Bible school is where you get to be fired up. <laughs> I didn't know that place was supposed to. Sometimes they're designed to quench the fire. 
But I thank God that, you know, when I went to Bible school, it didn't quench my fire. God connected me with somebody who, who was a prayer warrior. And we began to pray about things. We began to talk about things that was going to end the generation, the spiritual generation that we are. This brother was dangerous. We were in a church. We, went, we, were, we, were, we were, you know, in a school of a man that, that was defined to be the father of the, of, the, of the, you know, charismatic Pentecostal order. And God was speaking to us in 1991 how he was going to judge that system. How do you say that to people? How do you say that? That all the things that it also was preaching because I went to Archbishop Benson in the Arsenal school, you know, school, all nation for Christ. Now all of this is coming down. What? I mean, it was too, it was it is it, like you're going to commit suicide. That was my journey, friends. It's a dangerous thing to tap into the prophetic. That thing will isolate you. You will think you're running mad. You're thinking you're losing your mind. <laughs> At the time I said, maybe, maybe I should go and see a psychiatric. Maybe I'm losing my mind. You're hearing, you're seeing things. God is speaking to you. You're praying. God is telling you about things. You're praying. God is saying somebody's at your door. Knock, is, this person is about to knock your door. Huh? And, and just before the person knock, I open the door. And this person gets a skin and says, how do you know I'm here? I say, well, the Lord spoke to me while I was praying. Somebody's there. Friends, strange things. And the days of strange things are here. Because God is still a God who does strange things. But we're not just about the excitement. You see, that, 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 all of that it was to tease me. The Lord was teasing me into something deeper. <laughs> just like I'm teasing you right now, I'm teasing you. If you ever think you've touched the, the reality, the life of the prophetic, no, 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 you joke. There is more. Uh, the deep calls to the deep. No matter how deep you are, there's a deeper dimension. No matter how tall you think you are in the things of the spirit, there's a greater realm. No matter how wide you think you are in the things of the spirit, ah, there's a greater hallelujah depth and, and, and width of the things of the spirit. By faith. Faith is the sight of the spirit that brings you into the realities of the things of God. By faith. By faith. Noah, being warned of the things not yet seen. In holy fear. Are you seeing the components? Faith. Connecting to holy fear. Faith bridges the things that are not seen. But triggered by holy fear. In holy, holy, holy fear. There's a dreadful fear. There's a fear that comes from the devil. There's a fear that comes from God. That reverential fear is what is no longer in the body of Christ today. That's why somebody can sleep with their secretary and sleep with their God knows what and still come to church and hallelujah. And the power of God will move you. God, ah, this thing. <laughs> then they call it grace. They say it's grace. <laughs> it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hand of the Lord. In holy fear. That is what the men of old had. Those people were understood. They, they lived in the sacred order of life. They were tracking God earlier in fear and in trembling. We don't have that today. And that's why it's a sin. The presence of God is no longer with us. Yes. Because you see, wherever you find the presence of God, you will find men who reverence his things. You will never find the presence of God without reverence. No, no. You will never find Find a place where the presence of God is without the values of reverence. Think about it. Think about it. The day you bring the presence of God back to a, a nation, a city, a society, you bring order back. The presence of God comes through order. The presence of God functions through order. That's why they told them this is the order to which you must serve amen, in this tabernacle. 
These are the priests that must go. These are the priests that must carry the utensils. This order of Levites, amen, this is where they must stop. Everybody had their function. That was a shadow. But now we, we are walking in the substance. It's still the same principle. There's still an order of people that must carry the things of God. They call the Rechabites. They say, come drink wine. <laughs> come drink wine. <laughs> Your fathers are dead. Jeremiah, call them, lock them in the room. Say, hey, it's wine. Everybody's drinking wine. You to drink wine. They say, no. We are the Nazarene. <laughs> we are the order of the Nazarenes. Our mouth does not touch wine. Our head is sacred. We live in the sacred order. Everybody can be going crazy. We don't go crazy. That is still the order, hallelujah, of the Zadok. That's why our school is called Zadok. When everybody was going crazy in Babylon, you see, I mean, if you go crazy in Babylon, I mean, you, you, have, you can be justified. After all, you're in captivity. <laughs> yes, Babylon is a place of captivity. They, I mean, how, who, 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 who remembers God in, in, in captivity? Nobody remembers God in America. Everybody does their thing. Come on, it's a, it's a commercial dimension. You know, if you're not selling something, somebody is selling something. You understand? It's, it's, it's an enterprise. It's an enterprise. The dimension of the worship of the Americans is an enterprise. It's a Babylonic system. It corrupts. It teaches the Nazarites to drink wine. It, that order teaches the Nazarites to drink wine. Nazarites have covenant with God not to drink wine. Razor must not touch their head. Do you see what Samson was doing? He was corrupt amen, by a commercial system. He lost his place, lost his eye, lost his strength, lost his vision. Finally lost his life. Are you getting this, friends? The prophetic is not a gift that we just speak about. It's not a gift that we just use. It's the nature of life that we live by. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, where we live, all has to be prophetically engineered. Prophetically wired. We are wired. If we are called into the things of the prophetic, listen to this, your entire life, your pain, your sorrow, your joy, your laughter, your, your need, your abundance are all tagged, hallelujah, by that spirit. You can run. Everything, when they shut your womb, is all part of the prophetic. In the when you come into the reality of the prophetic, you will understand that there are no devils in your life. <laughs> there are no devils. Even when you're crying, oh Lord, I don't know what to do. They say, stay there. It's part of the process. Stay there. We're coming. <laughs> he will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary heart, your God will surely come. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary heart, your God will surely come. He will come and save I pray you'll understand these things, friends. There's a song I used to sing back in those days. Wherever he send me, I'll go. Be it in the quiet mountain. I can't remember the, the lyrics now. Oh, by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face the mighty mountain or valley that can deal? The shepherd of my soul will be my guide. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen to your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Be it in the quiet pasture, 
Oh, valley back and deep, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain, oh, valley back and deep, the shepherd of my soul will be my guide. Didn't he say he's going to lead you? Didn't he say he's going to go ahead of you? In the prophetic, there are no devils there. <laughs> no, no. If you want one devil, they will give you. <laughs> but when you grow, when you grow in the Lord, listen, I'm not saying there are no devils. I'm not saying there are no evil powers. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you get to a day where your entire life is captured by him, You see, there's a scripture we've been reading. Colossians 1, 15. He is before all things. All things are created by him. Things visible and invisible. Whatever thrones or whatever they may be, everything is expressed in Christ and through Christ, for Christ. <laughs> so where's the devil? <laughs> Light and darkness are before him. Light and darkness are the same before him. Where is, where is Satan? Is but a tool, an instrument to bring you to perfection. They use him to perfect you. They use him, hallelujah, to refine you. He's an instrument in the hand of the Lord. He doesn't even know it. <laughs> you know, you know. I, I'm going to destroy the world. And then some people are afraid, oh, you know, the Antichrist is coming. The anti Who is the Antichrist? When Christ dwells in you? What are we doing? We're debunking all those little pet doctrine that people have built. This is not an issue of light and darkness fighting. No, no. In the kingdom, no. Light, light and darkness are the same before the Lord. It takes the two <laughs> to produce power. It takes both the positive and the negative. There are dimensions of a life that wants us to enter. But our battle is now flesh and blood. We have to go back and learn what faith is. We have to go back to school and learn what grace is. We have to go back to school and learn what wisdom is. <laughs> we have to learn what counsel is. There has to be a redefinition of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have to go back to the school of Christ. Back in those days where we, where we used to do discipleship, I used to run what is called the school of Christ. It's the place where the builders, where the philosophy of heaven and the nature of Christ is infused into our spirit. The only thing that changes us is the ministry and the principle of teaching. There are too many preaching in the church. That's why people are shallow and they do spooky, crazy things. They ask them, give them petroleum, drink it. They say, drink it. They also drink. Hallelujah, Jesus, in miracle. <laughs> I laugh and say, look at these fools. There are intelligence to the things of the Spirit. In divine intelligence. When, when he, the spirit of truth, come, he will tell you of things to come. By faith, Noah. Noah is a person, but he connected to a divine order of life. What was that divine order? The Bible says, by faith, Noah. Then we later understood that Noah was a righteous man. So when you, when you bring faith and righteousness together, all right, you get what I call kingdom dynamics. By faith, Noah, when one of things not yet seen, can you live in that realm? You're living in the realm of things. You're doing things. You're, you're, the expression of your life is from a dimension of things not yet seen. Don't you think your life will be full of all kinds of questions? Mister, what are you doing? Where are you going? Everybody's sleeping. You're awake. What's going on with you? Why are you praying as if Jesus is coming tomorrow? <laughs> I know that's my wife. Sometimes I'm sure she just wonder, well, this guy, you must be out of your you're crazy. You know, I'm talking about the things of the spirit. There are days that I don't sleep on the bed with her. Not because I don't want to sleep on the bed. I sleep on the couch. I'm just making myself uncomfortable. You know, it's in me. You, you have to. It's something I want to feel uncomfortable so that I can wake up and pray. 
See, sometimes when you sleep on the bed, you feel so cozy. <laughs> no, when you journey with God, you cannot afford to always feel cozy. You, you do things that will position you, that will position you where you, you get up, you wake up. You know, when I'm sleeping on the bed with my wife, she talks me in very well. All the, all the blankie, everything, and they put me. <laughs> you sleep, by the time you wake up, it's 7 o'clock, God help you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this woman, if I continue to sleep like this, I will miss God. No. So someday, I just decide to sleep on the couch. You know, I put in my Bible on tape because, of course, I don't want to disturb her. She goes to work. I'm doing my job. This is my work. So she goes to work, so I don't want to disturb her. So I sleep on the couch. When I'm sleeping on the couch, I've got my, my iPad there. I put on my Bible on tape. You know, my spirit is alive. What am I doing? I'm recharging my spirit. <laughs> I'm recharging. Don't, I'm, I'm sleeping, but my spirit is, is just taking in the word. Have you tried it? Try it. When you wake up, you feel light. You feel very light. You feel alive. Then at some point, when that thing dies down, my spirit just get up. and I don't stop, stop praying. What, what, what are you praying? You know, when I was in Bible school, the Lord said to me, he said, I need you to sow, to begin to sow into prayer. He said, in fact, the word is, I need you to start investing in prayer of the things that are of the future. It was from there God began to speak to me about, you know, the end of that order, that, you know, season, that move. God told me when that thing was going to die, when that thing is going to end, and how the church will be plunged into a period, a season of darkness, and there's going to be chaos in the body of Christ for a season. And God told me, stop praying. That was, I thought I went to Bible school to learn theology. No, God connected me with somebody who sparked my spirit. This guy was doing, you know, his, 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 uh, was not, he wasn't master now. He was, he was doing his uh, uh, postgraduate, I think, on, on, you know, on, on practical theology. He was ahead of me. But we connected in the spirit. Oh, how I love that man. He, 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 he pushed me. To, to the life of prayer. In fact, he was in charge of the prayer, you know, uh, 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 um, coordination of the entire school. So when he, when he left, I took over from him. I became the coordinator of, of the entire, you know, uh, uh, Bible school, you know, prayer thing. That was all God sent me to, <laughs> to, to go learn in Bible school. Can you believe that? Of course, I was in class doing my thing. You know, and I was passing. I passed the things I can pass. The one I can't pass, I left it. But it was it was people. Listen to this. The greatest thing God can do for you is to connect people who are carriers of the spirit to your life. Ah, please don't ever, ever trivialize a relationship that is born of the spirit. Don't you dare it because if you do, you have lost a curriculum in your spiritual development. See, those of you that are connected to me today, you see. It's not by accident. Some of you have never, have not met, but our spirit is speaking the same language. You know what? Because that's how God orchestrates his thing. God will take of the things he has deposited in me. And he finds somebody like you hungry and say, Isaiah, this person is hungry. I need you to deposit all of that. Deposit it into them. That's how the things of the spirit is. That's why I see in the spirit realm, there are no boundaries. I can touch you as you can touch me by the Spirit. It's, it's all the dimensions of the operations of faith. By faith, we can connect. There is a place that we are meeting. There is a place where we are meeting right now where the Father himself is presiding. Hallelujah. That's the scripture we read in, 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 in Hebrews chapter 11. Yes, we have not come to a mountain that can be touched. You still want to touch it. That is a second day order. That order has changed. There's a, there's a life they're bringing us into called Mount Zion. A dimension of a light. We, a, a dimension of a light that is coming down. We can't touch that mountain yet we're in the ascended realm. It's a place, hallelujah, that is called amen, the, bad, the, the bad place of the firstborn. It's a place where the spirit of just men are made perfect. It's the place called the assembly, the assembly, hallelujah, of the firstborn generation. It's called the church of the firstborn. That's the, that's the image of the true ecclesia. The true ecclesia is not the fact that they gather in the place. The true ecclesia connects by the spirit, hallelujah. When the true ecclesia meets in a place, there must be earthquake. 
Are you getting this, friends? You see? I've left my note. I'm just speaking from my heart. This is where we're coming to. This is the life that we are building. Something is happening in the spirit, friends. In the midst of this shutdown, there is a lifting up. I said in the midst of this shutdown, there is a convergence. There's an ascendance. There's a progression. There's a transition. There's a translation. There's an ascension. He who ascended is first him that descended. And he who has descended to the foundation, to the lower place. When we understand where we've descended to, we can understand the principle of our ascension. But faith now, when one about the things not yet seen, in holy fear, that's why we stop, in holy fear, in holy reverence, like some translation will say, he built an ark. A fear that turned a man to become an engineer. Think about it. Wisdom is building a house. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the things that will allow you to be introduced into what is called the prophetic life. When you understand this thing, when you are born into this order of life, nobody will teach you how to function in the prophetic. Just like nobody teaches a child how to speak the mother's tongue. Huh. Nobody teaches a child how to speak the mother's tongue. The fact that the child was born into that order, into that culture, into that environment, into the house... One of these days you hear the, the child start saying, Wah, oh me. <laughs> you see, you cannot understand that because I'm speaking my language. The child starts saying, Danky, Danky. <laughs> Let me speak the little Africans I know. Kalias, to go to your house. <laughs> That's that's what because when some dogs come, I hear you know my daughter say Kalias to Kalias to. I say okay, <laughs> Kalias to go to your. <laughs> you see, children by nature they grow in their mother's tongue. It's the same way the things of the spirit is. When you're born in Christ, you will speak the language of Christ. The the problem is. Many of us were born in religion. And therefore the nature and the language of heaven is strange to us. It's strange to us. It's strange. It's, it's strange things. It's strange to us to, to remain in God and pursue God. To crave for the things of God. It's strange. We can't handle it. You handle it for three days, at most seven days, something and you want to go back to the flesh. <laughs> because the flesh all right, is our default. And the reason because we were not truly born. They said these are the ones, these are the ones that were born in Zion. They will be called, amen, sons born unto David in Zion. See, if you're born in Zion, you will speak the language of Zion. Alright? If you're born somewhere else, alright, and you they brought you to Zion. You will still be struggling. Except you go through the process. 
of what is of what is called assimilation. That's what that's what Babylon does. When Babylon capture us, the capture people, the first thing they do, they force you to learn their language. They force you, amen, to eat their food. They force you to assimilate into their culture. It's part of the principle of winning you over. That's what they did to you know to to you know to you know to those guys that came from from Jerusalem when they were captured. Yes. They gave them a different diet, a different, you know, a, a costume, a different order of life, you know. They, and that's what Babylon is still doing today. You know, all of those things that we watch in Netflix, in, in uh, 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 Showmax, all of, all of that is the food of Zion. They are, they are trying to culture us. They are trying to make us love their food, you know. Our, our children, they know so much of, you know, uh, Mickey Mouse and all of, all of those things they've been Capture. They capture them young. That's why my in my house there are certain programs we don't watch. I tell my children, no, we don't watch Mickey Mouse here. <laughs> because Mickey Mouse is part of the program that they use to deaden, to deaden the spiritual diet and the spiritual quest of our children. When by the time you're done with Mickey Mouse, then they give them this other one, uh, uh, Pokemon, Pokemon, whatever they call it. They give them Pokemon, then they give. You see, all of these are powerful, powerful culture bombarding the mind of your children. By the time you you go, <laughs> they are starting, you know, you now want to say go to go to uh, um, what do you call it, discipleship class? No, you know, Bible. You know, they, they don't want. They don't, have you noticed? Our children don't want. They don't want Bible. No, give them Pokemon. Give them. <laughs> that's what they want. But of course, not my children. I thank God I didn't raise my children in the church. That's one. That's one. You know, thing. I thank God that I, my children were raised in my house. They didn't. They are not raising. My children don't know a church. Of course, they've been to one or two churches. No, our house is their church. And my children can read all the book. You know, they can read Genesis to Revelation. They can tell you what it is. I, so I train them. You see, as I'm teaching you right now, when I'm done, I also tra tra train them because I can't. I can't lose. I can't. I, I, I can't. I cannot. I cannot. You know, perfect one and leave one. I've got to balance the two. One of the one of the major thing you have to do. You know, if you're a parent, if you're going to be a parent, you've got to have time to raise, to train, to build. Kingdom values in your children is war. It's one of the greatest war you're going to fight in your life. Because there's already a system waiting and ready to capture. Just, just, just while you're, you're bringing them to this war, the, 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 the air the breathe itself is toxic. Everything is toxic. <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked when I see some children, what, what comes out of their mouth. You see some crazy parent, they, they buy, you know, you know, some device and put movie there and give it to their children to be watching. Say, look at you. You think you're, you, 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 you think you're, you're whiling away your time. You're trying, no, you're destroying, you're destroying the soul. You're destroying, you're destroying the configuration of God in the life of that child. You put them in front of the TV just because you need time to do your own thing. No, put a music for them. Or if you want to a device, there are good devices. Good, excuse me, good apps that you can give your children to play with. Let them learn to play piano. Let them learn, you know, to, to sing and uh, don't 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 create don't don't force demons. Don't open the spirit of your children to demons in the name of cartoon. When they grow up, they become trouble to you. You don't even know. You don't wear. You, you see, I, I, there are some family right now. They dare not speak to their children. They are afraid because they open the door. The demon is sitting. The spirit of anger, wickedness, and hatred. Children will say to their mother, "I hate you." Say to their father, "I dislike you." Don't ever come to my room. And they are Christians. They're like Adam, <laughs> who was found wanting in his own garden. <laughs> I mean, anybody who comes to my house do not have 
the right to breach the law in my house. No, no. There's a reason why God places Adam at the gate. It's my house. Even if you're my father-in-law. Sorry. There are things we don't do. You give my children things, they bring it to me first to see it, to approve it. I don't care who gives it to them person. It's an law, it's a law, it's an order that we have built. You see, if you raise your children by the system of the environment, that the, by the culture of the day, ah, you'll be weeping. You'll be weeping like this. Because you see your children turn to a monster before you. See, my daughter, she's a my daughter, she's beautiful. Beautiful. She herself knows she's beautiful. I know she's beautiful. But I tell her, don't let that beauty deceive you. You're beautiful. But the, the, the true beauty is what flows out of your spirit. You need to see my daughter pray. I taught her how to pray. They pray. Love Jesus. You've got every day I ring, I ring that song into their brain. You've got to love Jesus. Jesus is the most important thing. She wrote a letter to her mom one, one time, a word, you know. He said, Jesus is the best thing in my life than your second. That's, that's the way we want to raise our children. Jesus is the best. He's the first in my life. Your second because I've taught them that. Your parent is not the first. He is first. One day, I'm not going to be there again. But when you let them know that he is first, you see, they will feel my lack of presence there, but they will know that there's a greater father. Got to you, you cannot let the world hijack your home, your family, your, your children before your eyes. And we t We're talking prophetic. What kind of prophetic? Prophetic is to be able to build posterity. <laughs> if, if we have prophetic and we cannot build the next generation, we are the greatest failure. <laughs> if there's anything like that. We, do, we, do, we have failed woefully. Prophetic must bath the next generation. Have you seen churches how they run their things? We don't, we don't create succession. The next order, the next generation. The day the keyboardists refuse to get angry, say, I'm not coming to church again. That's it. We'll be running here and there looking for who's going to play the keyboard. No. You should have all children in the church learning some musical instrument. Learning some musical instrument is part of their development into the kingdom nature, into the kingdom, in, into the kingdom life. And you give them the best. So that when somebody wakes up one day and decides I'm not coming to church again, you call one of the children, take over. <laughs> I did that when I was in Nigeria as a pastor. I start teaching the children to start playing, you know, instruments. Because I know one demon can wake up in the head of, you know, especially those who are into music. Because they, they, money, yes, money, they love money. You should pay them, you should pay them well. But when they get greedy, you better have plan B ready. Well, I don't know why I'm saying this. I guess somebody needed to hear this. I'm going to round up now. Oh, Father, we love you. This is cool, friend. This is cool. This is cool. I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it today again. But I would have loved to if I can. But if I cannot, then we'll continue again tomorrow. Let's just take it easy. Let's, let's not be in a hurry. <laughs> I mean, for those of us living in South Africa, we've got 21 days locked down. That's, that's 21 days of training for me. Wow. I love this. <laughs> More lockdowns. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Isn't it good just to be in the presence of God and, and hear these things? If this has blessed you, why don't you share with somebody? Amen. Why don't you share with somebody? Why don't you share the, you know, share the link? You know, give to somebody. Let them listen. Let, let their life get to be touched. Let their life get to be imparted. Amen. Let them understand that God is speaking in the midst of the confusion. The voice of God is loud and clear to our generation, friends. I want to thank God for your life. Thank you for connecting with me. Thank you for spending this time. Thank you for listening. I pray that the seed of this truth, of this word, amen, that I've fall into the good ground of your heart will germinate and bring forth fruit. I pray this word will bring confirmation. Yes. For those of us that are already in the journey, maturing the things of God, I pray that this word will be a confirmation. will steer something and say, yes! After I'm not crazy, <laughs> I'm hearing. Yes. Because that's what we are to each other. Alright? If, if we come into the confluence of the prophetic, we affirm each other. We confirm each other. Yes. 
He said, ah, I mean, also hearing. Yes, yeah, because you heard somebody said the same thing. So, ah. so God is actually speaking to me. That's how we grow. All right. So I really want to appreciate everybody. Thank you so very much. May the Lord continue to empower you and strengthen you. May he continue to grant you grace. May he continue to provide for you. All right. May he continue to empower you. May he continue to release himself, pour himself into you. May the spirit of truth continue to lead us on. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Uh, please don't forget to share if you, if you love it. If you want to get to hear more of what we've been talking about you can go back to you know the, the link there's so many things that we've talked about i think that today's our 13th, 13th uh, edition on laying the foundation into the prophetic okay and we just thank god for what god is doing god bless you enjoy your afternoon or your evening god bless you thank you so much